So we have the word of God, brethren. And God's word is, is spiritual food. We know being physical beings that our physical bodies are constantly running down. Minute by minute, our bodies are literally dying. But brethren, at the same time, they're being revitalized and renewed by physical food, which nourishes and sustains us. And thankfully, again, our overseer is the doctor of the natural medicine, and we can nourish and sustain our bodies with the natural supplements and uh, be blessed in that way. Now, what would happen if we were to stop taking food into our bodies? Well, we would begin a process which, if not interrupted, would result in the end of our physical lives. Now, in the same way, our spiritual life is sustained by spiritual food. So God describes his word as the life-giving spiritual food. It is the staff of our spritual life. In Matthew 4.4, 4, I'm sure that you know that well-known scripture, Jesus Christ said, he answered, you know, as he was asking, he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In John 6.63, Jesus Christ, you know, he said that Christ's words are spirit and life. And he was in the flesh. The word of God person is personified. I'm sure you remember in John 1, 14, that uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In John 6, 51, he described himself as the living bread. I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. So, again, he described himself as a living bread, which, if we eat of it, will enable us to live forever. And exactly, we understand that he, that's, you know, symbolism. And we do understand that, you know, by each year having an annual Passover ceremony that we indeed eat of his bread and drink of his blood and therefore brethren that's the guarantee for our eternal life in Romans chapter 8 we have verses 5 and 6 speaking about those who live according to the flesh and those who live according to the spirit Romans 8 verse 5 for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace this is you know this last part of the sentence i want you to notice to be spiritually minded is life and peace so we can be spiritually minded only if we are regularly putting into our minds spiritual thoughts god's thoughts in the same book in romans now in chapter 12 well-known scripture that was even mentioned in in the prayer about you know one of our prayers the scripture that tells us that we are to be transformed romans 12 2 you know our minds must continually be renewed a spiritual mind is not permanent in a physical body and do not be conformed to this world says romans 12 2 but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may provide prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So brethren, every day our minds must be renewed by the study of God's word. As you know from the Old Testament, God spoke personally to Adam, to Enoch and Noah, to Abraham, to Moses, and all his prophets in the Old Testament times. But today God speaks to his servants through his word. If we are not letting God speak to us regularly and consistently through diligent, wholehearted, and often prayerful Bible study, then we are not learning to think as God thinks, and we will starve to death spiritually. Now, of course, God's word, there were purposes why God indeed allowed canonization of his word and allowed his word to be in a written form. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, another well-known scripture to all of us, it says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Well, literally, it says it is God breathed. And this verse summarizes the purpose of God's word. 2 Timothy 3, 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Well, we have just read what? The word of God is profitable for these four things. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, 
for correction and for instruction in righteousness. Let us take apart these four words and see what they mean. It says the word of God is profitable for doctrine. A doctrine is merely a teaching. You know, we refer to the doctrines of God's church as the truth. And these doctrines explain God's plan for humankind, how he's working it out, and our part in that plan. So our understanding of the truth of God will depend directly on our personal Bible study. Then the word of God is good for reproof. This could be better translated as conviction. If you see Strong's Concordance, you'll see conviction. And no wonder, because God's word convicts us. In James 1.23, we re learn that the Word of God reveals to us our shortcomings and sins and convicts us of them. James 1.23 says, For if anyone is a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. In Romans 7.7, 7, just as Paul came to understand what lust is, we all learn what sin is through the word of God, Romans 7.7, 7, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law has said, you shall not covet. The word of God, the purpose of the word of God is to be a two-edged sword that cuts both ways. Hebrews 4.12 for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So it plainly shows, the word of God shows to us our thoughts and our real intentions. God's word, brethren, convicts us and brings us to deeper and deeper repentance. Job, remember the story of Job, Job was finally convicted of what he was by God speaking to him personally. So unless God is speaking to us through regular Bible study, personal Bible study, we won't see ourselves and we won't qualify to be used by God. Then we have read in 2 Timothy that the word of God is good for correction. This is, now this is very interesting and you see this is why I keep insisting on uh, us getting educated about the word of God and very often when I see some of those correspondence you know, between us and we just correspond about everything it seems but about the word of God sometimes. Uh, the word correction, you know, this is the only place in the New Testament that this Greek word is used. Did you know that? You probably didn't. Now you see that's why I insist that we just keep being educated and uncover these little nudges of the truth that will make us understand better the word of God. Now, this word correction, actually, in Greek, literally means a straightening up again. You would see that if you consult Strong's Concordance. Now, God's words, you see, sets us straight. You know, let God's words correct us. Let God's word correct you, change you, and clean you up. All of us, to one degree or another, you have to keep that in mind, brethren, are affected by our past sins. What we have done in the past, our habits, and our ways of life, and what we have thought affects our minds and our character today, indeed. Psalm 119 and verse 9, looking into and heeding God's word will clean us up. Psalm 119 verse 9, how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to your word? We can have a parallel, we can draw the parallel scriptures to this one from John 15, 3 and Ephesians 5:26. John 15, 3 says, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. And Ephesians 5, 26, speaking about the church, you know, what Christ does with the church, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. So that means, brethren, that regular intensive Bible study washes and cleans up our minds. It flushes out the spiritual filth that accumulated, you know, that has been accumulated in our minds before conversion. Before conversion, we accumulated all kinds of filth, and you know the studying of the Word of God it just washes us, washing of water by the Word flushes out the spiritual filth. And then we read that the Word of God is profitable for instruction in righteousness. Again, Psalm 119, and in verse 172, speaking of God's commandments, God's commandments are righteous, and God's Word lists, expounds, 
and magnifies the commandments so that we will understand how to obey them in the spirit of the law. Psalm 190 verse 172 My tongue shall speak of your word, for all your commandments are righteousness. Well, just as any machine comes with an instruction book to show how it is to be operated, God has given a man an instruction book to show us how we are to be, so to speak, operated. Well, that instruction book, of course, is His Word. And following those instructions will give us happiness, peace and joy in this physical life, as well as ensure that we will experience these things for all eternity in His Kingdom. You may ask yourself why we should study God's Word. Well, please turn to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Because we're going to find a very interesting passage there. First in verse 15 and then from verse 18 all the way through the verse 20. Deuteronomy 17, 15. You shall surely set a king over you whom the Lord your God chooses. One from among your brethren you shall set as a king over you. You may not set a foreigner over you who is not your brother. Also... This is verse 18, when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write for himself a copy of this law in a book, the law we're going to be reading during the Feast of Tabernacles, from the one before the priests, the Levites, and it shall be with him, and he shall read it all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, and be careful to observe all the words of this law and these statutes, that his heart may not be lifted above his brethren, that he may not turn aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, and that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. So that was from Deuteronomy 17, verses 15, 18 through 20. Now notice, please, that God commanded the king of Israel to write out the law and to read it every day of his life. Have you noticed verse 19? He shall read it all the days of his life. And in verse 20, it should, you know, it would give him a right perspective of himself and keep him humble. It would direct him, you know, in God's way and give him a long, happy life. That his heart may be lifted above, may not be lifted above his brethren, that he may not turn aside and that he may prolong the days of his kingdom, he and his children, in the midst of Israel. So, you know, reading the law, studying the law constantly, from a daily, on a daily basis, would give a king a right perspective of himself and keep him humble. It would direct him, you know, in God's way, and it would give him a long and happy life. As we know from the various accounts of kings, and Chronicles, those kings that were righteous brethren, as you remember, they had a very long and happy life. Now, how much more should we, who will be kings in the world to come, how much more should we study God's word every day as a way of life? In Hebrews chapter 5, we are going to see something that I keep warning us all the time, and some of us in particular, verses 12 and 13, Hebrews 5 verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Well, but in some of us, experience has shown me, who should now be teachers and need to be taught, you know, they need to be taught the beginning principle of God's Word. We all need to avoid that. We all need to really dig in and deeply study and learn God's Word. Some of us have to be teachers by the age. And, you know, yet there are those who have come to that age and they beha behave like small children and, you know, if they were at least pliable and obedient as little children, that would be less tragedy. But uh, most of the time, it's just that they, you know, 
stick to certain circles and simply do not let themselves get off and mature spiritually. So therefore, I, I keep appealing to you all the time that we need to just go on for spiritual maturity. And uh, I also understand that we are, many of us are by now, by now should be teachers. We need to strive for perfection and for the, uh, of course, spiritual maturity so that we can handle the meat rather than, rather than milk. Now, how to study your Bible? Well, first of all, <laughs> have a proper attitude. <laughs> have you ever heard anything like that being said? Have a proper attitude. Go to God for help for the right attitude. Pray first, asking for a right attitude. And then be positive toward Bible study, brethren. Don't look at it as something you must get in. Something that it needs to be done. Well, study with zeal. Study with excitement. That, you know, God, who created heaven and earth, is through his word, written word, revealing to us the purpose of our lives and reveal, you know, reveals to us the road, the narrow path that leads to eternal life and to eternal happiness. So, you know, be positive, have intellectual curiosity in study, and of course, ask God for the right attitude. Finally... Hunger and thirst for righteousness, or after righteousness, after a knowledge of God's word. Now, how to study your Bible? Provide a regular place and proper environment. What that, does that mean? Well, it means have a definite area or place to study. Never study in a place not conducive or conductive to a proper mental attitude. It is preferable that you select a quiet area or and that you select a time when you will have peace and quiet or the, or the time when it will be most likely that you will have peace and quiet. And if you think that you can study successfully and comprehend completely what you are studying with a lot of noise and uh, outside interruption, well, I'm afraid you'll discover that you're kidding yourself. Now how to study our Bible. There are plenty of Bible helps in this day and age. And however, I need to draw, drink, bring to your attention that the best Bible help is a good Bible itself. So get one if you don't have one. There are useful helps that you need. For example, there was when I was a student, so that would be the nice, a Cruden's Concordance. It was a short, nice concordance, but nowadays I think you can find it online. So, you know, studying God's Word doesn't doesn't cost us anything as it used to in the past because you don't have to be buying any of those helps then also there is a bible dictionary that you might want want to you know have and uh, or check rather and that you might want to certainly see what and how those words are defined uh one of those you know that was a crude concordance was when i was much younger then second is a bible dictionary such as one of these uh, Pelubets, Hastings, it's one volume, you know, Bible dictionary, Unger's dictionary, and uh, that's about it. So we have useful helps that we need. We need some of those commentaries because they tell us the, about the uh, background, they tell us about the context of certain events, and therefore that's how we can understand them better. There's also Hastings commentary, it's in one, one volume, and Unger's. Unger's commentary as well. Useful helps, you know, strong, strong, so you Young's concordance. In the past, you know, it was those publications were very expensive. Not everybody could have afforded them, but nowadays we have got them online. We have got them online, and as I many times I have said, you know, the internet has allowed us to better understand and to better make a better research of the Bible truth. So uh, we have, you know, both. Uh, Strong's and Young's concordances online. Plus, I mentioned to you this eSword program, which is free to be downloaded. You can have as many English versions of the Bibles as you want. You have Bibles in other languages. And all of those concordances now that were volumes, books, are now condensed and uh, basically are included into that program. E sort into that electronic program. So basically, on one at one click, you have availability of all the various Bible helps that used to be very expensive, and that you know you had all the you you 
you only had to go to a library and possibly use them or you know you had to buy them yourselves but not everybody was able to of course afford that so useful you know useful helps would be strong sort of young's concordance that you can check even online you can check it on internet also bible commentary such as you know one or more of the following for example clark's commentaries adam clark for the old testament you have them as part integral part of that e sort program then also critical and experimental commentary by jameson fawcett and brown and it's good for the new testament clark has got excellent explanations about the old testament and jameson fawcett and brown for the new there is also one more uh, you know it's called sonsino books of the bible if you can ever find them it's jewish you know it does explain about the old testament so bible helps again you've got various dictionaries and commentaries brethren online you've got them also com uh, included into that e sort program so you can have all those instead of having books that are very heavy sometimes and voluminous you can basically have electronically you can have all those uh, commentaries and all those various dictionaries and even various versions of the Bible and you can you know have them as useful help in studying god's word to understand it and to to live it study methods well when it comes to study methods we can perhaps study the bible by subject for example you choose a subject of faith or sabbath or sin etc now you can use concordance correspondence course dr thiel's writings and other helps to get information on one subject it is very good to memor memorize a key scripture on a subject and write it, you know, write in other scriptures in the margin of that scripture, or chain reference the scriptures beginning at the key scripture. So methods, studying methods. You can also study the Bible by books of the Bible. Uh, by books of the Bible, well, we can use Bible help to learn who wrote the book to whom it was written, when it was written, circumstances under which it was written, geographical location of an individual or individuals to whom it was written, historical and geographical background of the area, summarize all this background at, a, at the beginning of the book in your margin, and then, you know, you can read from chapter 1 to end of book and their chapters at a sitting. Now, you can also use Bible help as you read. And you can also remove previous three chapters each time, you know, before beginning. You can review, sorry, previous three chapters each time before beginning with next three. You review the three previous and then you continue with the study. You can also study Bible by just simply reading it, reading it for inspiration. Now, you know, there are times that when you have only a few minutes or you're just about very tired and you want to fall asleep, well, you know, reading for inspiration is good when you have only those few minutes and before you just drop into bed. Some examples of good chapters for this are 1 Corinthians 13, Hebrews 11, 1 Corinthians 15, John chapters 13 through 17, Matthew chapters 5, 6 and 7 of his gospel, Philippians chapter 2, where chapter 3 and chapter 4, and many others, you know, including any of the Psalms. Now, frequently used scriptures, you know, if you peruse and mark scriptures in a well-marked Bible, Noting their location in the book, you know, noting their location in the book and po position on, on, the, on this page. But also, you know, you can be doing studying difficult scriptures, as I already mentioned. You can, for example, take a scripture like Colossians 2.14, Ephesians 2, chapter 15. Well, what to do in that case? In that case, basically, study difficult scriptures, you know, read articles or booklets for the information then write basic explanation in the margin use a modern translation how to mark your bible oh when i say mark oh uh, yeah i can see some horrible people and they're, 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 they're you know 
thinking that the Bible is not to be something that you are not supposed to be writing anything into that book. Well, the Bible is the book. It is the book that is the guidance to our lives. And we certainly want to make the most out of that book and we want to, you know, mark our Bible. So how to mark our Bible? Well, basically, there are, you know, frequently used scriptures so we can peruse the marked scriptures in a well-marked Bible noting their location in the book and position on the page as well. Then we can be doing studying difficult scriptures like Colossians 2.14, Ephesians 2.15, etc. And in order to understand all of that, in order to uh, understand what we are studying, you know, it is good to read articles or booklets for the information. It's also good to write basic explanation in the margin. So keep, you know, using your Bible as a textbook. It shouldn't be just all blank and, and, and well preserved. No, God gave us his word to be studied. So therefore, feel free always, you know, to write some basic explanation in the margin. And of course, use a modern translation. How to mark your Bible? Well, simplest method is the best. I can tell you I've got several colors that I use for different topics. Sometimes just having a red and blue pencil is enough. And it's always good to write, you know, be writing clarifying topics, other scriptures in, in margin. So making, you know, marking is no substitute for knowing God's word well. Now how to get the most out of weekly Bible study and Sabbath services. <laughs> well, one thing is very obvious, get plenty of sleep and rest beforehand. <laughs> Secondly, pray and study beforehand. Also have a right attitude as you listen, because as you listen, keep in mind that God speaks through ministers. So listen, be alert and concentrate. Don't let your mind wander, apply to self, don't apply to others. And you will know and you will learn and profit only if you apply to self. Now, take also good notes during the expounding and explanation of the uh, various topics. So, uh, take good notes. We forget 90% within 24 hours. That's how forgetful we are. And take good notes and review those notes as soon as possible and then once more later. Now in conclusion, remember that our spiritual growth will depend on how much we are deeply drinking in of God's word and making it a part of us. Only by knowing the Bible can we let this mind be in us that is in Christ. Uh, let this mind be in us that is in Christ. It's in Philip. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus Christ. Now, our every thought and action should be tempered by the knowledge and understanding of God's word. Well, our you know, future in this physical life, that is the extent to which you know, God will be able to use us does indeed depend on our studying of his word. Our every thought and association should be tempered by no that knowledge that we have and understanding of God's word. Because, you know, our spiritual growth basically will depend on how much we are deeply drinking, you know, of the word of God. So let this mind, the Apostle Paul says, in Philippians 2 5, only by knowing the Bible can we let this mind described in Philippians be in us that is Christ. Our every thought and action should be tempered by the knowledge and understanding of God's Word. Our future in this physical life, brethren, the extent to which God will be able to use us, as well as our future for all eternity, will depend a great deal on how faithful and diligent we are in our study of God's Word.